Today marks one month since tornadoes killed 13 people and caused nearly a billion dollars in damage across North Texas. Governor Abbott has requested federal help for Collin, Dallas, Ellis, Rockwall, and Van Zant counties. Fox 4's Alex Boyer is in Rowlett tonight, one of the hardest hit areas. And Alex, I know you have a look at how rebuilding is coming now one month later. Yeah, Heather, I've had a chance to talk to several people in the community. A lot of them are living in hope, but others admit that, quite frankly, they're living in fear of the unknown. They're fearful of what will become of their lives and also of the places they once called home. Come on through. It used to be my electric gate. Brad oh, wow. Crane tries yeah. not to take this whole tornado thing nothing. too seriously. The Toyota Tundra got thrown up against. It's got a little bent to it. It's not that Brad doesn't care. It's simply his way of coping after coming face to face with the power of Mother Nature. When I got to about right here, I just turned and said tornado and we just all started running that way. December 26 was Brad's birthday. It's a day he and some 1,100 residents in Garland and Rollette will have a hard time forgetting. Is there room on that side for some of this stuff? Yeah. Joshua Leverett has put his small business on hold in order to get his Rollett house back in order. My wife's pregnant and um, she wants to get back in the house quickly and I'm thinking how can we get back, back in here when it's going to look like this for a very long time. He's been at the home every day since the tornadoes tore through his street. We sent up Sky 4 to get a look at how the landscape has changed in the hardest hit areas of Rollett and Garland. While progress above ground is moving slowly but steadily, with nearly half the debris cleared in Rollette alone, below ground, things are coming together fast. And I open up my 300-pound door here, nice and solid, no debris could hit it and come through. Since the tornadoes touched down, some 15 storm shelters have been installed in the area. Sammy Walker paid 6000 for his. I don't know anything about the game of chess. But I'm, I know about the game of life. You got to be ahead of the game. Back in Garland, Brian is thinking about taking the plunge, installing a storm shelter, not if, but when he rebuilds. This is home. Yeah, this is home. This is home. Even though it doesn't look like home, it's still here. We'll make it back to a home for sure. And a couple of weeks ago, I told you about an organization called the National Disaster Photo Rescue. They were collecting photographs that were found in the debris around parts of Rollette and Garland. Well, I'm happy to report that today they're actually going to reveal some of those cleaned up photographs. You can look at those photographs. They're being displayed tonight at the Garland Granville Arts Center from 5 to 8 o'clock tonight. Again, some of those photos that have been cleaned will be on display for people, hopefully, to pick them back up. Steve. All right, Alex Boyer in Rowlett, thanks. Let's move it to Red Oak. Workers are still repairing Shields Elementary School after it was damaged by a tornado. Students at the school are now completing lessons at a revamped and reopened junior high school. Cleanup in Red Oak and Glen Heights is slowly moving forward. Only a few heavily damaged houses are left uncovered. But you see the empty slabs there. Those homes are gone. South of Lake Levon in the town of Copeville, there's not much left at the station, the gas station and convenience store where two people died. After the storm passed, the gas station ended up being a meeting place for volunteers who were there to help in the recovery process. The debris from several nearby businesses and homes has since been picked up, leaving just a very few signs that the buildings once stood there. 